Hello, welcome back to your physics teacher. Today we're going to be looking at a question in two dimensions. And here we have in the figure below a bird changes direction in 3.8 seconds while flying from point one to point two. And they want us to determine the bird's average acceleration. So here you have to imagine that this is the bird's path. And at two points, they're giving us the velocities at point one and a point two. So they're giving you both the magnitude and the direction for both of these velocities. Now what they want us to calculate is the average acceleration. But now because we're doing grade 12, we have to keep in mind that these are vector quantities and they're actually in two dimensions. So there's no longer one dimension of motion. So what we want to find is the average acceleration, which is the vector quantity. And if you recall, the formula for that is just the change in velocity over the change in time. Now, that's pretty easy, but not because we're in two dimensions, you have to use components. So what I mean is this equation is actually hiding two equations, one along the x and one along the y. So let me show you what I mean by that. So really this equation was hiding two equations, the average acceleration along the x and the average acceleration along the y. Then we can further simplify both of these equations. Where what I've done is because the change in velocity along the x is gonna be the final velocity, which is v2, the x component minus v1, the x component, and if we're dealing with the y components, the average acceleration along the y, v2 y component minus v1 y component. What we're gonna do eventually is once we have the components of average acceleration along the x and along the y, we're gonna recombine them to actually get the magnitude of the average acceleration. So first we break it down into components, then we're gonna recombine it to actually get this value here. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do it just by using those numbers. So right away, we see that we need to consider the x components and the y components. So what we're going to do from the given velocities, we're gonna find the x and the y components. So we're gonna break them down into their rectangular components. So I'm going to draw each of these into the rectangular components. Then we're gonna use Soka Toa to find the components. So what I did here is I redrew the velocities that I was given, v1 and v2. And when we break them down along rectangular components, we have the x component horizontally and the y component vertically. So to determine the directions is usually by the vector itself here. So the x component points to the right, the y component points down. Whereas for the second velocity vector, it points to the right and then pointing up for its components. Now, the good thing about rectangular components is that they're right angle triangles. So that means you're going to use so toit, sine ratio, cosine ratio, and tangent ratios. Now, let's put in the values, and then we're going to use the sine ratio and cosine ratio to find the components here. So, what I didn't do before is that I was actually giving the angle theta. Theta is what we call it in general. So here for the first velocity is east 30 degrees south. So east 30 degrees south. So that's the angle that it makes there. And for the second part is east 30 degrees north. So that's the angle that it makes here. And if you watch my previous videos, one good thing to take advantage of is whenever you have the angle closest to the horizontal axis, in other words, closest to the x component, then the x component will always be the cosine ratio and then the y component will always be the sine ratio. So if you're not convinced yourself, make sure that you break down this triangle and then use cosine adjacent or hypotenuse or sine opposite or hypotenuse to figure this out. But again, a cheat that we use, if the angle is closest to the horizontal, then we can use the cosine ratio for the x component. 
So I'm going to do the same thing for this triangle, and then I'm going to use the Y components with sine. Alright, so it, it is a bit messy, but I do expect you to know how to break it down into components. And if you need help with that, make sure you watch one of my previous videos. So in this case, the V1X, V1Y, we find the components. And for V2X and V2Y, we have the components. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to substitute it into the formulas for average acceleration along the X and average acceleration along the Y. So let's do that here, okay? So let me try to break this down so you don't get confused. Okay, so all I did is we rewrote the formula and now we're gonna put in the values that we're given. But notice that we have to consider directions because these are vector quantities. So we have the magnitudes already from before, but now we need to consider the directions. So recall V2X, actually points to the right, so we're going to assume it to be positive. V1x is also pointing to the right, so we take that as positive. Now don't get that mixed in with the negative. This negative is there from the formula. So what is helpful is if you want to use brackets at this point. So V2x, the magnitude is given by this, and because we have to consider directions, it was pointing to the right, so we take it as positive. So this would be 8.5 cosine 30 minus and V1x. See here for the formula is the minus, so that that's carried over. The V1x it was to the right, but the magnitude was given by 6.4 cosine 30. So we get approximately 0 0.48 meters per second squared, and it is a positive quantity. So since it's positive, and we took positive to be to the right, this would be the east direction. So the average acceleration along the x component. We're going to repeat this calculation, but we're going to do it for the y component now. And V2Y, we need to consider the convention that if it points up is positive, if it points down is negative. So V2Y, it was pointing up, so it's positive, and we have the value here. And again, it is useful to use brackets so that way you don't get mixed up with the formula and the negatives from the directions. V1Y, now V1Y is tricky because this one's actually pointing down. So this is where I was trying to get you to consider the negative in there. So negative from the formula, and then negative because of the direction that it points. So this would be negative 6.4 sine 30. I think it was 3.8 seconds, yeah. So you see, that's gonna make a big difference, and most likely, if you're watching the video, this is where you made the mistake. So I get 1.96. And because I did get a positive value, this means that it's pointing the positive direction along the Y, which we took it to be north. But we're not even finished. There's still more to do, because what the question was asking us to find to determine the bird's average acceleration. What we found, we found the components of the average acceleration. So once you have the components, you can build back your triangle using components to get the actual average acceleration. So then once again, we go to the right angle triangle, use Pythagoras theorem, and use sine, cosine, and tangent to find the angle. So I'm gonna erase this part of the board, and then I'm gonna show you the next part. So make sure you take a screenshot if needed, okay?
Okay, so once we get the components of average acceleration, what are we gonna do? We're gonna hit thumbs up and subscribe. And after that, then we're gonna see how we can take these two components and we're gonna draw them out. So let's draw the X component is pointing east. Average acceleration, X component. And the Y component is pointing north and notice how I'm attaching the vector head to tail because when you do vector addition it's going to be head to tail and why are we doing vector addition because the sum of the x component plus the sum of the y component is going to give you the resultant which is the average acceleration vector and that's what they were asking for in this question. And because these are x components and y components, you have just constructed another right angle triangle. This means that we can take advantage of Pythagoras theorem to find the unknown side, and we can use sine, cosine, and tan to find the unknown angle to find the direction, because this is a vector quantity. Remember, vector quantities, you get, need to give the magnitude and direction. So, Let's find the magnitude and let's find the direction. So for the magnitude, we're going to imagine a right angle triangle with the Pythagoras theorem, C, A, B. So C squared equals to A squared plus B squared. And C squared is what we're trying to find, the average acceleration. This is the average acceleration along the X plus the average acceleration along the Y. So let's isolate for average acceleration, which is taking the square root, put in our values. And very useful to put in the brackets at this point. Maybe let me get my calculator. Uh, we get a magnitude of 2.02 meters per second square. And this is only the magnitude. Because we're dealing with vector quantities, you need to find the magnitude and the direction. So let's find the direction now. And the direction, we're just going to take advantage once again. It is a right angle triangle. We have all three sides of the triangle, so we can use any ratio. But my favorite one to use is going to be 10. So 10 theta, opposite which is the average acceleration along the y and adjacent which is the average acceleration along the x so the 10 inverse I get approximately 76 degrees that kind of makes sense from the way I drew it, seems reasonable. So now we have found the magnitude and direction. The only thing that you're gonna to need to do at the very end is just write your concluding statement. So this is where you have to feel good about yourself because you solved such a complex question. So the average acceleration is going to be the magnitude, which is 2.02 meters per second square, and the direction it's going to be starting from east, you're rotating in 76 degrees north. Now, you may have found a different direction, but that's if you drew it differently if you used the y connected to the x. Uh, that's confusing, so follow my method, it's better. So first I draw the x component, then the y component. And this is your final answer. So make sure you try it out on your own so that way you get the best learning and also when you subscribe to my channel, right? I'll see you in the next one.